is Ethan Dusley Flad. I'm Director of National Organizing at the Fellowship of Reconciliation. And I'm delighted to join you this evening with Dr. Fernando Onam and Dr. Paula Jones for this inaugural kickoff conversation for our Wink Fellowship Public Conversation Series. Um, we at FOR USA are really just so uh, proud and excited for this series to get going with Dr. Fernando Ona, who's our inaugural Wink Fellow. Uh, the fellowship, which was just initiated this year, honors uh, Walter Wink and June Keener Wink for their lifetime and legacies of uh, movement work and leadership. Um, uh, we were inspired at FWAR to create this fellowship um, to honor their seminal leadership in active nonviolent resistance and on Walter Wink's part and June's living example of the use of art to spread a message of peace. Uh, Walter Wink was the author of um, countless books, uh, including uh, The Powers That Be, um, and Dr. Ona is going to be talking with us about a book series, a book group series that we'll be offering over the coming months through his leadership. We'll be hearing a lot more. I want to turn it over now to Fernando uh, to lead us into tonight's conversation. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you so much, Ethan, for that. And a hearty welcome to everyone who's on our Facebook Live and joining us today from wherever you are. Um, uh, before I introduce my conversation partner today, I actually wanted to begin our conversation this evening or this afternoon or this morning, wherever you are, uh, with a little prayer. And actually, it's a little excerpt from Dr. Walter Wink's book, The Powers That Be. It's on page 185. Great spirit and in memory of Dr. Walter Wink. Intercessory prayer is spiritual defiance of what is in the name of what God has promised. Intercession visualizes an alternative future to the one apparently faded by the momentum of current forces. Prayer infuses the air of a time yet to be into the suffocating atmosphere of the present. History belongs to the intercessors who believe the future into being. The future belongs to whoever can envision a new and desirable possibility, which faith then fixes upon as inevitable. Amen. Amen. So I want to welcome each and every one to, uh, to this conversation with my dear, good friend and close colleague, Dr. Paula Jones. Paula and I are both longtime friends. Um, and I often remark that Paula and I probably knew each other before this lifetime. It feels like that. And it feels like I will know her infinitely beyond this lifetime. And it's a deep honor and a great pleasure to introduce her here tonight. So on paper and professionally, Paula, Dr. Paula K. Jones is the director of the San Francisco Food Systems Project in the city and county of San Francisco with the Department of Public Health there. That's how I actually know Paula. She received her doctorate in environmental studies and in agroecology from the University of California in San Francisco. She is a political theorist, she's an agroecologist, she's an environmentalist, she's a deep thinker around food systems. But more importantly, more importantly for me at least, Paula and I share a deep root and a deep core, which is part of the American landscape. We're both from American farms, born and raised, connected to a rural history that is part of the fabric of the United States for all of its good and all of its bad, um, we come from those complex rural locations where family farms are often disappearing, especially the small farms, but where people are tenaciously hung, hanging on to rural values and rural connectedness to the earth and remembering, remembering how we can redeem the powers as Walter Wink always says. And so for me, it is an honor and a pleasure to introduce Paula to this space and have a conversation with her about Walter Wink's work that will lead us into 
a conversation about how we envision this work and how this looks like in our everyday practice and invite folks in our audience um, through the Facebook Live to invite questions from our audience in the chat so that we can interact and engage with uh, the FOR community about this work. So Paula, welcome to our, Thank you. our, our launch of this conversation series um, that we're going to be holding monthly for the course and duration of my fellowship year here at FOR as a Walter Wink and June Keener Wink Fellow. So welcome, Paula. And I wanted to just open it up and, and invite you to perhaps talk about because you are one of the significant people in my life who introduced me to Wink. And, um, and I just wanna hear from you, your connection to Dr. Wink and Dr. Wink's work. Um, and let's begin with that. How does that sound, Paula? Thank you, Fernando, my dear brother. Um, thank you so much for having me be a part of this um, launch of this uh, series and um, be in conversation about Walter Wink. I, learned of Walter Wink's work through um, a, a sermon done by uh, Reverend Dr. William um, Barber, um, Bishop Barber. I listen to his sermons on, online a lot of times on YouTube as I'm exercising or whenever and um, really get his insights into how to make a more just world and what we can do to um, to fight for justice. And in listening to one of his sermons, he mentioned how what we're dealing with is this very time of, you know, deceit and, and darkness. And, um, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm not sure he used those words, but he mentioned, just read Walter Wink's trilogy about this and you'll know more about what I'm talking about. And I frantically wrote it down wherever and went to look it up. And I said, what is this? And I know I, uh, Fernando and I are always in conversation pretty much daily. And I, I'm sure I shared it with you at that time and said, we have to learn about this. We have to read about this. And there we, you know, we embarked on our journey to read and understand and just um, learn from um, Dr. Wink's work. And there's so many things in Dr. Wink's work that resonates with us. And, and, and I, you know, one of the things that um, I'm curious about are, are how we have these conversations about the powers. And I'm just, you know, it, it's something that we continually wrestle with that I'm hoping to wrestle with with our FOR community. I mean, thinking about how often we're, it, it, it's overwhelming, at least in the, in the line of work that we do, right, Paula, like in, in food systems, food justice, and even in witnessing where we come from, right, even though we're from different parts of rural America, there's a deep resonance of what we confront when we witness the American farm and the farm systems that we come from. Could you just talk a little bit about, because we, I, 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 this is where we, we sometimes get into this, like, you know, overwhelming nature of what Wink talks about is the domination system and the system of powers that so folks still wrestle with, you and I still wrestle with often, right? And we'll probably wrestle with until we're no longer, you know, in physical form yeah. here. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I think about this all the time, the powers. I mean, you know, why is it that we have hunger in a land of plenty? You know, why is it that we have plenty of money, yet people are still going without what they need? Why is it that we we have all the, you know, knowledge around how to, um, you know, how to, how to feed ourselves, you know, possibly in a much more ecological way, but we have rivers that are polluted. Um, we have... You know, our groundwater, I mean, the farm I grew up on, the well that we used, we could no longer use, you know, because it was polluted, you know. So these are all manifestations of systems and powers that are not serving us, that have fallen. And our engagement with them are, <laughs> I was just reading something that's like, we're not supposed to shirk away from that which is evil, mm -hmm. but, but actually to engage 
Um, mm-hmm. And I think that I think about that all the time with, you know, my work and, and making sure people have food or or even, you know, as it comes to like the farm, which I'll be, you know, going to visit in a couple of weeks to visit. And, you know, it's harvest and knowing that all, you know, that, that people are doing what they're being taught to do and what the systems are supporting, yet it is not giving us long term, you know, sort of um, ecological pathways for, you know, a better world. It's just, you know, we, you know, so that's where I think about it all the time, you know, is that, that many of us are, we, we are engaged in the systems, we're part of these systems, um, yet we are also really talk about all the time is how do we transform these systems mm-hmm. to better, um, you know, build the beloved community, build the community that Jesus wanted us to build. Absolutely. And that, you know, but this is one of the hardest challenges for us, because in a way, when you and I've talked about when we've read through the trilogy and, and worked through the, and I feel like we still are working through the trilogy. Um, And everyone who's on this call, it's one of those things that I, as Paula said, I think, you know, like she and I will be working through some of these ideas um, till the day we die. But when we are faced with um, the fallen powers, which is what Wink has has sort of illuminated for us. It's a it's a very powerful framework for understanding our lived realities, right? Our the everydayness that when you go back in a couple of weeks back to the Midwest um, to go back to that farm, that that not only is there ecological sort of degradation and damage, but there's also sort of the negative impact that the fallen powers and these institutions have had on our families, right? Like my family has a lot of chronic diseases because of exposures to pesticide sprays, right? And small particulate matter um, that were sprayed onto farms. Um, And those are indelible marks on our bodies, our marks on our bodies from the fallen powers. And how how do we face that and work towards that? And you and I've talked about how do we walk towards that fear and anxiety sometimes, right? Because it's daunting and complicated. And, you know, for me, the way the way through has been how Wink has invited us into understanding not only that framework, but how we can respond nonviolently to that framework and witness that framework and recognize that work to be, there's work to be done. And you had told me uh, months ago you know, Fernando, we can't do everything all the time, right? Like this is a huge issue and this is a huge problem. But you had some, you had pointed to something that Wink had written about. Mm-hmm. about and I, and, and, and remind me if I'm getting this incorrect, but you had said, you know, Wink writes really clearly that, yeah, this is daunting. This is huge. But calls it, what is being, how are we being called to the work that we're supposed to do? Right. Right. And you're not supposed to be doing more than you're called to do, because that would be sin. I just I can't find the exact post it in the book right now where that's from. Uh, But I know it really hit me as like that was such a relief. Like we are called to do what we are called to do. We must do that. But we are not um, supposed to do more than we are called to do. And that Mm. is daunting when you see all of the issues from our own, you know, um, you know, the, the loss of faith in our own governmental systems to the loss of, you know, environmental qualities and, and, and you know, the, the poisoning of our land to the, the injustices of hunger and, and stress and, and all of this. But we are called to do, there is some, and as we go through the series, maybe we can really pull, pull that out. But I just remember just reading and it really struck with me that, you know, that would be playing God and, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to do more Mm -hmm. than we're called to do. And Mm -hmm. we might even mess things up if we try. So Mm -hmm. do what you're called to do and be Mm -hmm. very um, firm in that. Mm -hmm. And, and we're not necessarily supposed to do more than that. No, absolutely. And we actually have a question from uh, our Facebook live. How do you understand our call to witness and live Wink's third way in this current movement or moment. How do you understand our call to witness to live Wink's third way in this current moment? Do you have any thoughts about that, Paula? 
as while you're thinking about that, also thank you, Jason, who says um, is from a great grandson raised his great grand his great grandmother, a farmer's daughter, and taught about the respect for farms and their importance. This conversation takes a unique meaning for me. So thank you for that, Jason, because that that resonates with I sense not only myself but Paula as well, and then also Tina. Greetings from. San Francisco, um, from the Ohlone lands as well. So thank you for joining us. But I'd like to try to visit this, 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 how do we witness and live Wink's third way, you know? And I think this is part of what Paula, I mean, what you're saying, Paula, about what we're called to do and that, but, you know, it's, it's also what I heard in, in Wink in that third way and in, in, in what you just said, Paula, is, is our ability to tune into that, to attune to what we're called to do. You know what I mean? Like, how are we, how are we paying attention to what we're called to do? Um, and, and, you know, if something came across, I mean, I'm thinking about the question and, and would love to, you know, also hear other thoughts about it. But, you know, the third way is, you know, Jesus's way, right? And, and, but Jesus did not resist those who are evil, right? It was not about resisting. It was about engaging, but engaging in a different way, mm -hmm. right? That is the lesson. So I think for those of us who, you know, are thinking about this all the time, I mean, and, and that really struck with me when I was, I was looking through some videos of um, Dr. Wink talking with some colleagues around this and just really being clear, um, you know, there is evil in the world. We know there's evil and, but we are not called to resist it. We are called to engage and transform, yes. right? Yes. yes. I mean that, and that, that is so deep, right? To engage, right? To really deeply engage with this and to transform it, right? And, and, and Wink doesn't walk away from that and invites us to creatively and imaginatively engage. But we need to witness, deeply witness what's going on to understand the contours of the fallenness of powers, to understand the contours of that evil so that we can understand, right, our nonviolent action, right, in response. That, that creative moment where we can engage, right, and hold accountable. I don't, you know, part of me is also thinking that Wink is not letting us off the hook, right? Wink is not just saying watch and it, you know, and look. Engagement means that there's an action. There's something that there are a, there's a process that we're we're doing. And that the answer is not always clear, but it's clear in its in its response. The response is nonviolent, right? It's creative, it's imaginative, imaginative. But it's in process, it's iterative, right? You and I, Paula and I always talk about systems and it's, it's always this dynamic relational inter in interaction and encounter with the world, you know? And for me, that's the third, the third way is that moment of confronting and engaging with powers and not running away from it, even though, right? I'm always just like, like I'm, I, I want to run, right? I, there's a lot of fear and anxiety or even feelings of overwhelmed with, right? Um, engaging with the powers. But what has given me courage in this, what has given me faith, Paula, is you, right? It's the fact that, oh my gosh, you and I, when we met, everyone, I just have to let you know, like when Paula and I met, we so bonded on the fact that even though we were from different parts of this country and different cultural backgrounds and different experiences, we were connected to the root of our genealogy on farms and connected to the earth. You don't have to be born and raised on a farm like Paul and I, but the resonance was with the fact that there was the third way for us and the way, because it's part of our, our Christian heritage was that in Jesus and the model of Jesus was the care of our communities and our earth and our, and our whole system that we live in. And I remember Paula telling me once, so that, that is redeeming powers, right? That is the creative resonance that helps us find a way through, even though we may feel like we're always making it up on the way, right? Paul, we're always like, when you and I worked together in San Francisco, I was like, Oh my gosh, Paula, I don't know what I'm doing half the time, right? 
because we were confronting so many things, not even just in San Francisco, in the state of California, in the Western region of the United States, and in federally in the United States of America. And we were always just like, holy cow, what are we doing? And are we up for this, right? <laughs> and, and I see that, you know, just to, um, you know, a little bit more of a like, what is the third way that we're talking about? And it's really, and I, I'll, I'll just start that out, you know, and, and Fernando, you can add more, but the third way is really nonviolent resistance, especially as it applies to political situations, because yeah. the powers are all of these systems, right? System structures, um, and the third way is engaging and transforming, but in a nonviolent way. And do you want to add to that one? No, absolutely. And um, Veronica's on the Facebook Live and Veronica's a sister of ours, our dear sister of ours who works with Paula. And you'll be hearing from Veronica in a couple of months. I'm praying, Veronica, that uh, that you will join us in one of these conversations. But as as Veronica says, right, it's about integrity, humility, honesty, and authenticity, and how these show up, all of these show up in our daily lives. And then that for us in our tradition, that Paula, Veronica, myself, and many others share, that that's the core value of what we understand from Jesus, right? That that nonviolent action, that creative force and energy, right, allows us to imagine a different way through, right? A different way through. And as Emma, Emma, who, Reverend Dr. Emma, thank you for being here, um, requotes what you said, Paula, to do more than what we are called to do is to play God. This is such an important word for me today. Thank you, Dr. Reverend Dr. Emma, for reiterating that. But this is our work, right? Our work through is to creatively engage not only with ourselves, but with the fallen powers. And this is what we're hoping to do in this series. Um, and this is, you know, I, part of the reason why everyone I brought Paula on is because Paula pushes me in this way, because there's a tendency for me to run back to the farm, right? <laughs> you know, there's a tendency for me to go, okay, I could just go back to the family farm, right? Um, and just be there and be in that bubble, right? Um, and the challenge is, is to actually not only turn and pivot towards the fallen powers, but like you said, Paula, engage. And as Debbie in our Facebook Live says, it sounds like and makes sense to her that the powers are part or are all of the social justice issues, et cetera, immigration, food systems, et cetera, et cetera. Is this some of what you are saying? Yeah, absolutely, Debbie. What do you think, Paula? Yeah, exactly. Exactly what you've put in there. The powers are all of these systems and structures and organizations and how we organize that are you know, as I said that I have, have been rewatching some of the videos of Dr. Wink in conversation with colleagues around the powers, you know, he talks about how, like, as humans, we must organize, right? And they, these, these organizations um, and are from God, because all is from God, yet they also can be fallen, right? They can be fallen and not aligned with their true mission, Mm -hmm. um, to help people. And then, but there was also a possibility of them being transformed, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking, the engagement with them as part of the transformation. So uh, uh, exactly, social justice issues, you know, we're in a land of plenty, yet many people will go home tonight to bed without a place to sleep. They will go to bed without um, any food without anyone that necessarily cares or loves them, right? Those are all fallen, you know, mm. that that's part of the fallen powers and we must engage to transform those. Mm. Yeah. And that's a lot right there. Right. Um, and, and just to come back to it is that in that space of engaging with the fallen powers, it is really trying to attune to and clarify what we're called to do in that engagement. Right. What does it mean to engage for each and every one here in this room and every one of us in this culture and society to engage with the powers, 
especially the fallen powers, right? And that we need to, that's part of our discernment. I feel like Wink calls us into a space of deep discernment, of reflection, of understanding of ourselves and ourselves within our communities and ourselves within the greater, larger, right, world that we're living in, right? And in that way, it is an embodied practice. So someone is asking, how is something like food justice work, embodied practice? You know, I think this is where I will always go towards June Keener Wink, right? And her work about bringing the body into a space, right? Being deeply present about breathing into our bodies, feeling our bones, right? All, all the way we can be agile, but also the ways we can, you know, sort of uh, have pains and, and, and we, our joints may be out of whack or, but to be in our bodies, right? And, and to feel our bodies within this world. And it makes it an embodied practice because at least for, for what Paula and I do, food, we eat and consume work, food, right? It comes into our bodies, right? How are we eating? What are we eating, right? Is all about how we engage with our bodies and the powers, right? And so someone is asking you, Paula, can you describe a little bit of what you do in the everyday and how that intersects with the work that I'm doing um, in the everyday? Uh, and how we sort of connect and intersect around the Walter Wink stuff. Yeah, um, you know, going back to, um, I mean, I think food justice work and all this work around food, you know, whatever term we're using for it is, and, and I think we're, we're pushing ourselves to do better, right? Mm -hmm. um, especially all the work around food justice and food sovereignty is pushing us to be better. It's pushing us to, you know, not only just give food, but, you know, give the ownership of the food to others, you know, to make sure the community is actually driving, you know, what is being given. So in sort of my work and, and my uh, dear colleague and sister is, I think, on the Facebook Live, Veronica Shepherd. I mean, we do this by we actually go into intercessory prayer before we start our day, right? Mm -hmm. In terms of whatever meetings we're going into, um, because we want to shift and transform um, to make sure that community is owning um, the means of their, um, the production of their food, whether it be organizations that are, you know, led by the community is actually getting the funds or there's new projects that are, getting land, you know, I see someone, you know, has come in uh, from San Francisco, there's a, another organization, you know, or many are trying to get ownership of the land so that they can actually go back to the land and integrate that into healing practices and spiritual practices and, you know, community healing and wellness, you know, whether it be around food, whether it be around um, culturally, you know, affirming spaces, you know, these are the things I think that connect with this work. Um, and, and that we also use, I think Dr. Winks, um, you know, just his, his expertise and, and how he calls out, you know, in the scripture and, and it's, it's just, it's him and, and others just, you know, we need to be in prayer always, right? History belongs to the intercessors. And I can tell you that my dear colleague on the, on the call or on Facebook, Veronica Shepherd, we, you know, go into full intercessory prayer, you know, around and knowing that God has told us that we could come to him and we can ask for his help and that we are there for him. And so I think as it relates, I mean, this all relates to actually my work with Fernando, which has never you know, has continued since the day we met, like first around food and around community health. And, you know, now even around our understanding of scripture and spiritual practices and what God has promised to us. Um, so I would say that's how it connects for me. And in a way, it also has transformed how we understand our own tradition, right, Paula? I mean, definitely, you, you know, we come from very specific kinds of Christian traditions that um, has re have read the Bible or scripture or sacred texts in specific ways. We come from communities that understand what it means to be in our tradition, what it means to be a Christian in our tradition. Um, and in a way, we've 
you know, we've in working together, right? I feel like we're also transforming and evolving our understanding of our sacred text, that it's living, right? It's a living scripture, that the works of, in our tradition, Jesus is a living model for us that we engage with each and every time. And every time that Wink invites us and reminds us, to engage in intercessory prayer is an action, is an active engagement in transforming how we understand our own theologies as well as our own work, you know, and that's how I've understood our relationship together in our work, whether it's in the food system or in other arenas like in public health, right? It almost, it's, it's almost, you don't really necessarily need the discipline, right? The, whether it's public health or food systems, but it's really about the work, whatever that work we're called to do. Um, and Chris Ney, um, who is part of the FOR National Council member, uh, has, has asked or said, um, it's been a while since I read Wink, but I seem to recall that he suggests that the powers exist in ourselves, as well as the structures of society. So the call to transformation is both so social and personal. Um, I have to reread Wink to see if my memory of his writing is correct. I actually do think it's both social and personal, right? I think that when we think about, at least when I have understood and reread Wink, and we're going to spend this whole year in community reading Wink together. I mean, this is something, you know, um, Chris, thank you for bringing this up, because it's something I think we can wrestle with, that I continue to wrestle with, that, that the, that that it's, it is both a personal and social and cultural. It's sort of like understanding what violence is, that there's direct interpersonal, interpersonal violence, right? There's, there's, there's structural violence and that there's cultural symbolic violence and at these various levels of violence, we are part of it, but society and culture is part of it, that, that it's, it's a system and a systems approach of understanding that, absolutely. Paula, did you have any comment on that at all or on whether it's in um, it's both the structure of society? And I would say it's and, uh, I would just echo that. I mean, I just, again, was, you know, even just walking the videos and seeing, um, you know, one of the videos, uh, Dr. Wink in conversation with colleagues was talking about God doesn't give up, you know, so we shouldn't. And I, that really spoke to me personally, because there are times I'm like, well, this system, forget it. It's not going to change. And then I heard that and I was like, wow, that's not really for me to say. For me, I'm here to do the work and because God's not giving up, yeah. right? So I can't give up either. So I, I would, I, that resonates with me, the, the comment on, you know, our personal transformation that must be a part of yeah. this. And in a lot of ways, it's not just the Christian God either, right, Paula? It's God of how we understand yes. God or the, the spirit, divine. Of me, right? It's the divine, it's the sacred, you know. Um, and that's why I think Wink is not just for Christian audiences, right? That Wink speaks across uh, spiritual and religious traditions, that, that my brother, who is an imam in the Washington, D.C. area, who used to be the, uh, the Muslim chaplain here at Tufts University, would always say that we share the, sacred, the sacredness of a, of, this, of a God, of a spirit that we hold dear, that we seek guidance to, that we ask, and we, we, we call out in prayer in either lamentation or praise, right? You know, to our brothers and sisters who are Jewish and that deep, that deep um, tradition, um, I think Wink deeply speaks to, to how, how Jews understand God or how Jews under, or spiritually um, connect. This is also, I think, for other traditions that are not, part, you know, like the non-Abrahamic traditions that are equally at like Buddhism. And I think of my grandmother who was a, a Tibetan Buddhist, right? How her understanding of God and the spiritual resonates deeply with mine, even though she was not a Christian, right? Um, and so I, who, who practice earth-based religions, I think yes. that's what really resonated with me, I think, in reading this is that that's um, because the worldview at the time of, of some of the writings of the Bible are different frameworks and worldviews than what we have right now. So, and those are all called to be very valid you know, and, and to, to have power and agency. And um, so I think I go back to kind of even, you know, 
Fernando's, you know, work around interreligious and interritual um, kind of practices and how those all um, can be brought to bear to engage with the powers. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, you know, that work, as hard as it is sometimes, right, is liberatory work, right? When I witness that work being done, um, it can be really profoundly challenging because we get distracted by the fallenness of ourselves and the powers themselves, right? And that when we engage with each other in in a religious environment or interfaith environment, that work can be fraught with a lot of challenges, right? Um, But yet when we can be deeply and radically hospitable and deeply and radically curious, right? Which is what I think Wink invites us into that space, right? We can listen to, listen to um, the call of God, the call of the sacred, right? The call of the great spirit, um, the call of the universe, um, the call of mother, the call of father, right? The call to each other. Um, and this is our, this is why, you know, I, I love working with you, Paula, because you remind me of that, you know, when you were saying, oh, you know, there are earth-based traditions that, that even our own faith tradition is grounded in, right, Paula, is that it reminds me of something that we consistently forget. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in a world that is highly distracting me, right? It distracts me from remembering that genealogy, remembering that history, remembering that grounding, right? Um, and remembering that faith. But this is why, you know, I, I am so excited to be launching this thing with our community. It's for us to remind each other of this. I get to talk to Paula every day of my life, and I'm so blessed by that. Um, but this is an opportunity for us to work a- in a community of practice together, to really remind each other of what this, right, this work is, right? Um, And so I just, before we continue on, Paul, I just want to remind everyone who's on, who's still on our Facebook live page, please sign up to hear more about the group that we're going to launch. We're going to be launching a book club, a book reading of Walter Wink's The Powers That Be, this book. I don't know if people can see this, The Powers That Be. And we're going to be reading over the course of the the year of my fellowship here with FOR, uh, a chapter at a time every month um, to engage with the powers that be. So feel free to sign up on the FOR page, forusa.org, um, or you can email um, contact at forusa.org so that you can receive information about any of the upcoming um, Wink public conversations um, in our community. So Debbie asks us, are you able to share what your faith tradition is? Um, so Paula, did you want to share first or? I mean, sure. My, um, my beginnings were really from a little country church, you know, as a church of Christ out in the middle of the country where everybody knew everybody, right? For the first 18 years of my life. Um, and then, you know, once I went away to college, I kind of didn't really have any And then I started um, really learning more about different traditions from it being my friends who are Muslim or my friends who are Buddhist or my friends who are more earth-based spirituality. So I I would say that I've kind of picked up some of many traditions, um, but still um, I've always, I, I, you know, I'm baptized, you know, um, into Christianity and you know, I still am very much um, have always said I would, you know, live for Jesus. And, and I do believe I do. I'm not necessarily a strong proselytizer, but because um, that that didn't really work for me well. But I always, um, the you know, the example of Jesus always resonated very closely for me, like very closely. And so I, I would say that I, um, you know, have sort of a mixed um, kind of method approach, but um, very much, you know, have come from that tradition of, um, you know, Christian tradition, uh, but also, like I said, you know, have have been exposed and and learned from many other um, traditions. Thank you for that, Paula, and I can resonate with you. And Debbie, thank you for ans- asking that question because I think that's a really 
important question to ask so that we're we're at least clear with you as the audience of where we're coming from. Um, and like Paula, I come from a Christian tradition as well. And I come from a um, what I think is a little bit more conservative Christian tradition than you, Paula, right? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> well, we, I think we both resonate in this, right? Um, and, and for a lot of different reasons, um, you know, for me, my Christian journey has, has been one of deep questioning and, and being curious about how others organize their faith and understand their faith and, and reflect upon their faith. And so while I was raised in a very profoundly Christian framework and, and, and grounding, I also had the benefit of learning from other faiths. My grandmother was a Buddhist, a Nyingmud Buddhist of the Bonpo lineage, um, Tibetan lineage. And that was a real important part of who and how I understand even Christ. Um, and that, that journey um, led me to understanding and, and connecting to um, Islam and Judaism, um, which I, I deeply still am learning from. And our brothers and sisters who are Muslim and Jewish, I still gain deep understanding and insights on, on the sacred. Um, but also my work with, for instance, Yazidis and, and refugees and, and, and asylum seekers who are forced to migrate from their homes have also taught me about faith. Um, Zoroastrians and Baha'i and Yazidis and Hindus, um, all who have, have given me insight about my own Christianity, which I'm deeply thankful for. Um, so that's just a little bit about um, our faith traditions. Um, so we're being asked, Paula, if we can reflect on Winks on not becoming what we hate on pages 122 to 127. Thank you, doctor, for this question. Um, especially in this moment when there's so much animosity and polarization and even hatred in the world. You know, can we just reflect on that? What... What, what do you feel like uh, Wink is saying in that, in those pages, Paula, um, especially in this moment? Yeah, it's, it is a challenge, you know, it's, it's so difficult with the polarization and, you know, just the massive disinformation and um, just outright lying and, um, you know, so I do believe that we're called on, you know, not to shirk away you know, to engage with it. Um, and it, it, you know, it, and it's not easy. And I, I think about when I go back to, you know, where I'm from, from a very rural area um, that, you know, has low vaccination rates and, you know, voted, you know, you know, in certain ways. And, you know, so I think I, I what I have to, you know, what I'm called on, I think, and, and what I have learned is just that we must engage and we must you know, be stand in our integrity and honesty um, and nonviolently, right? In the spirit of like love and compassion. Um, and I think as Fernando says, you know, radical hospitality, you know, when we do engage with others. Um, but I, I, I would be interested in your thoughts too, Fernando. Yeah. And I, you know, thank you for that, Paula, because it's again, you know, it, it, it made me remember when, um, so when I was interviewed uh, for with Reverend Do Re Reverend Dr. Emma, um, one of, I, I had mentioned to her in that interview that one of my favorite quotes that you always remind me of, Paula, is that faith requires at times marching into the waters before they part. I always am quoting that because it is in that engagement having the faith, right? That when you jump in, right, you're even before the waters part, right? We're in it. And, and we need, you know, we're called into that faith, into our faith, right? That even if we go directly toward and walk toward, even with fear and anxiety, walking toward that, to have faith in our, right? That we together, that we're not alone either, right, Paula? Right? Yeah, like, exactly. We, we, you know, I love that we are together. Because when I go to the rural communities I'm from, right, you're with me. And that bolsters and amplifies my faith, right? 
because then I can go, okay, I, I'm here. I'm here in my, the community I grew up with, even though the community I grew up in often wants to reject me, right? <laughs> or, or doesn't want to listen to me or wants to put me into this other category that polarizes me away from the people I grew up with, right? But I'm reminded by the fact that you and I together with others, right? I'm so thankful for that. That gives me even greater faith that I can engage, right? I, yeah, that's true. I think coming together and being in agreement to be together gives us that, um, it bolsters our power. God honors agreements, right? Yes. Um, and whether they, wherever it is, whether it's in an urban area and I'm going, you know, we go into meetings or we're engaging with neighbors or, you know, wherever it's that we must, um, we must be conscious to not hold that hate in our heart. Mm. Um, and it's, I, I go back to the other comment about, uh, you know, the systems are in ourselves and we must transform ourselves too, which is, yeah. you know, it's always, and, and I really appreciate that comment because it's really, it's a part of the journey, right? It's a part of this journey is just holding myself that, I, you know, regardless of how someone's acting, I can, you know, I must not become what I don't like about it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so on that note, Paula, this is the journey, right? This is the journey that we're in. And I, we are coming to the end of our conversations with our communities. And we really want to appreciate everyone who's been on this Facebook Live, who's been joining us. And just to let you all know that we will be in a couple of weeks, you'll be hearing on the FOR page um, and through FOR Communications that we'll be launching this um, sort of conversations with the powers that be, reading this book that Dr. Wink wrote, um, chapter a chapter a month. And then on top of where, as part of the Wink conversations, the Wink Fellow conversations, uh, you'll get to hear from Paula again with our dear, dear sister and powerful ally, uh, Veronica Shepard, who will be coming in on uh, in a couple of months um, to talk more deeply about our work um, and their work in, in, in the food system. But over the course of this fellowship year, you're gonna be hearing from different people that I encounter along the way on this journey um, with Paula and with others, um, people who are working with forced migrants, people who are working in cooperatives, um, people who are working um, with child rights and child labor. And so we invite you and, uh, to join us every month um, to have these discussions. Um, we are hoping to be even more interactive with our audience and we invite you into that space to engage with the powers um, the fallen power so that we can redeem and be part of the redemptive act. Um, so our first book club meeting will take place in October. So please stay tuned for details. Um, and, and who Paula, is gonna be in conversation with you in the rest of the series, Fernando? What was that, Paula? Who, who are some of the other people who will, you'll be in conversation with? So we'll be in conversation with um, one of my really close friends who um, is working with child rights and child labor and um, human, um, human rights with children, um, Ben, who is uh, over in Europe. Um, we will be working, we will be having a conversation with a close friend of mine who is working um, with Islam spiritually and Islamic informed um, work. Um, and how does that translate into the work that we do um, with uh, interfaith coalition building? Um, we'll be talking to you and Veronica as well. We'll be talking with Coffee, Coffee Dixon, who's the head of um, the Common Good Cooperatives, who just won a Human Rights Award for their documentary, A Reckoning in Boston. So please stay tuned for, and more, there's more folks who are part of that list. And um, we will be announcing that through the FOR page and through the FOR communications um, in the months to come. Um, but like I said, uh, this is our, our first launch. And before we end this evening, I actually just wanted to um, say a prayer um, uh, and offer this prayer for all of us. And it's a prayer that was written by Sister Joan um, Chittister. 
before we we end, okay? And Paula, before we say this prayer, thank you for being here with us. I thank really appreciate pleasure. this. Um, and I, I'm deeply um, honored and blessed to be in your life. So thank you for your light in my life and being present with us today. Thank you. So this is a prayer written by Sister Joan Chittister. Great God, who has told us, vengeance is mine. Save us from ourselves. Save us from the vengeance in our hearts and the acid in our souls. Save us from the, our desire to hurt as we have been hurt, to punish as we have been punished, to terrorize as we have been terrorized. Give us the strength it takes to listen rather than to judge, to trust rather than to fear, to try again and again to make peace, even when peace eludes us. We ask, O oh God, for the grace to be our best selves. We ask for the vision to be builders of the human community rather than its destroyers. We ask for the humility as a people to understand the fears and hopes of other peoples. We ask for the love it takes to bequeath to the children of the world to come more than the failures of our own making. We ask for the heart it takes to care for all people as well as for ourselves. Give us the depth of soul, O oh God, to constrain our might, to resist the temptations of power, to refuse to attack the attackable, to understand that vengeance begets violence, and to bring peace, not war, wherever we go. And so may we be merciful and patient and gracious and trusting with these others whom you also love. This we ask through Jesus, the one without vengeance in his heart. This we ask forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So my dear sister Paula, thank you for being present with us. And for the FOR community that has been on this Facebook Live, we appreciate your presence with us. Uh, we wish you well, we give you blessings, and we hope you will join us for the first book club meeting that will take place in a couple of weeks here in October. Stay tuned for details. Thank you for being with us. Take care. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Bye-bye.